What's going on there, folks? Good afternoon, good morning to some out there. It is the Earth Master on this weekend, uh, Saturday, March 26, 2022, about 11 or 10:48 a.m. California time. Latest quake shows a 4.0 earthquake down here into the region of the Tonga Trench, Kermadec Trench Islands area. Let's go ahead and check out this latest movement here from the USGS. <clears throat> uh, let's get rid of that picture real quick. There we go. Um, let's, yeah. A lot of movement taking place overnight in the area of the Kermadec Trench, although USGS really not showing too much activity here on the map. Uh, most of that activity you've seen on the globe is early uh, preliminary data from the uh, EMSC model, but uh, I'm sure they will get to it. Uh, for now, they are showing, at least on the USGS side, some activity ramping up around the Fiji Islands area, including three very deep earthquakes. Um, some of these very close to 600 kilometers deep. 4.5 and a 4.9. It's a major adjustment going on once again in this area overnight, including the 4.0 that just hit, just hasn't uh, shown up on the map yet. Papua New Guinea, some uh, uh, shallower earthquake here, about 35, 57 kilometers for a pair of fives, and also some activity around the Indonesia area and up through the Philippines. Philippines there, uh, Volcano Taos kind of kicking up a little bit. Uh, looks like that thing is getting ready to. Uh, uh, erupt once again. There's some info coming out on the um, the Tau volcano in the Philippines. Looks like thousands of residents uh, were evacuated on Saturday after the Philippines Tau volcano spewed a 1.5 kilometer plume. So this volcano, kind of a very active volcano in the region. Uh, it sits about 45 miles south of central Manila. Uh, alert level was raised uh, to a 3 on a five scale that means there is magmatic intrusion at the main crater that may further drive uh, succeeding eruptions uh, magma magma in the shallow part of the crater interacted with water causing an eruption called uh, what is it Frieta magmatic activity Frieta, I believe that's right um, this guy said uh, so the head of the volcano volcanoology agency so man things kind of cooking out there in a big way with the volcano uh, let's see what we got here looks like the Philippines Tau volcano erupted earlier this year triggering earthquakes and ash fall across the region this is definitely a pretty active volcano um, looking at the Wikipedia article it's uh, of course a large caldera filled by Tau Lake in the Philippines the volcano is the second most active volcano in the country with 38 recorded historical eruptions, um, all of which were concentrated on Volcano Island near the middle of Tau Lake. Looks like the caldera uh, was formed between 140, wow, 140,000 uh, and uh, 5,000 BP. Been quite a few eruptions here, so, uh, but Got to remember the Philippine plate here has definitely been under quite a bit of stress, earthquake-wise, and I'm sure that's um, contributing to the the uh, volcanic activity we're seeing there in the in the uh, Philippines area. We've seen a lot of movement here up around Taiwan and other areas down to the south, so uh, no doubt affecting the volcano activity. Uh, looking at this map, the volcano Smithsonian USGS weekly volcanic activity report. I don't believe it's been updated yet as far as it to include Tau. I don't see it on there. There's been a couple volcanoes throughout the region of uh, New Guinea, Chile, Russia, and New Zealand area. Looks like the North Island here has seen a little bit of activity uh, between March 13th and the 21st. Looks like they had some type of volcanic tremor and a heating cycle there at uh, this volcano in the North Island, New Zealand. Uh, let's run down here. Check out. Let's check out the earthquake activity here along the northwestern part here um, of the Philippine Plate. Uh, some movement, some fives and fours kicking off here. Of course, this area has seen a massive amount of earthquake activity over the last seven days, up and down the board, including that uh, six-pointer that struck in the Taiwan region. But you can see that line of activity stretching around down towards Manila and uh, further down into the Indonesia area. One area we haven't seen a whole lot of movement here is the backside. 
the eastern side of the uh, trench, the Mariana Trench, the eastern side of the Philippine Plate. This area has kind of been lacking in movement, but uh, uh, it's uh, kind of hard to say exactly if we're going to get things cooking here or not. We can see some rather large earthquakes on the back side here. Let me show you guys the historical view real quick. If we can get this thing to work, maybe, maybe, there we go. Uh, there we go. There's the uh, kind of a historical look at some earthquake activity. So it does get rather um, active at times. Some of these earthquakes can be pretty large at that, sixes and sevens. Um, so just keep an eye on these quiet regions, so to speak. These things tend to tell a tale of potential uh, areas that could be next when it comes to releasing energy. But uh, not all the time, just something to keep an eye on. Uh, in that area with the uh, quietness. Japan Trench up here has gone quiet once again. Of course, they had that 7 point, uh, what was it? 7.3 off the east coast here of Japan uh, a few days ago. And then, of course, there's that 6.7 that struck there in Taiwan. So a little bit of large-scale movement. Looking at the last 30 days of uh, significant earthquake activity. There it is on the map. They, it's kind of weird that they included this as significant earthquake activity in Southern Cal. Um, that's a 4.0. Probably because of the uh, populated regions. But uh, looking back here, over the last 30 days, looks like uh, we had at least one seven-pointer. Quite a few sixes around the area of the Java Trench and the Kermadec Trench area. If you notice South America, we haven't really seen too much movement at all. <clears throat> and that includes the larger earthquakes here in the region of the Peru Chile Trench. Let's go back over here and check out today's activity. Again, still not a whole lot going on. This area has been uh, very quiet over the past uh, few weeks or so. Uh, yes, there is ongoing activity in the three and two range. Uh, we can see that on the EMSC model. We'll go ahead and run over here real quick and uh, check these folks out. And we'll zoom in here to South America real quick. And you can see uh, from the EMSC model, yeah, there's earthquake activity out there. It's kind of always happening in the two range. Sometimes we get from some threes in there as well. But far as uh, far as the earthquake activity goes in the you know the 4.0 and above, it's just not there at the moment. And uh, it's kind of a major player, major subduction zone there. So stress is no doubt accumulating in that area. Texas, western Texas, way out here around Guadalupe Peak, south of the border of New Mexico. A couple twos kicking off overnight. Uh, Texas, New Madrid zone, further up in Oklahoma, all pretty quiet. Just got that little activity down here. Uh, there's movement up here in Walker, California. Go ahead and bring up the all magnitude so we can see what we got going on here. It's still part of an ongoing swarm of activity. Latest quake there, 3.4. Somewhat... Uh, Somewhat kind of big, right? Let's check out the seven days of activity here in the Antelope Valley region, which sits right about here. This activity just to the southwest, looking at uh, about oh, 30 earthquakes or so within this region. It has been an ongoing swarm for a few months now in this area. It comes and goes along with uh, the rest of the region when it comes to the uh, west coast in general. Although looking at the map here, this kind of a uh, kind of appears just to be uh, a standalone swarm at the moment but I'm sure it's possible we'll see things kick up here along the eastern part of the Sierra Nevada uh, throughout the day today. Earthquake activity in the Sacramento Valley yesterday right, right along the Great Valley Fault Thrust area. Uh, accumulated stress rate here very slow at point, uh, point 0.2 mm per year but there is buildup and I'm not for sure the exact um, date of the largest earthquake in this region uh, and it can it can build up there's no doubt just because it's not the San Andreas fault or the major plate boundary there's still a thrust fault that runs along the western side of the valley uh, Sacramento Valley down through the San Joaquin Valley and uh, it does build up some stress uh, as far as historical data goes over the last um, um, 122 years it looks uh, looks like there's quite a bit up around Lake Oroville but over here along the west side of the valley, just not seeing, uh, not seeing anything in the way of uh, 4.5 and above. But uh, definitely, 
These little quakes here let us know that the uh, fault systems are still alive. They're the ones that we really don't pay too much attention to. Uh, you know, the ones that are kind of uh, sleepers in a way. They, they're somewhat dormant, but they but they do accumulate a little bit of stress over, over uh, long periods of time. And those are definitely alive and kicking, similar to the new Madrid zone, right? It's been kind of a, for as large earthquakes go, the 18, uh, oh man, I don't remember exactly when it happened there, but I believe it was 1811. Uh, 1811, yeah, when they had a, uh, a series of earthquakes uh, between 7.2 and 8.2 magnitude on December 16th, 1811. Uh, it was followed by ma um, magnitude 7.4 aftershock the same day. Shook things up quite a bit there. So an 8.2 out there today along the New Madrid zone uh, would be pretty devastating for areas of Memphis, uh, Jonesboro, all these areas here, highly populated regions. So it's been uh, it's been it's been quiet in terms of larger earthquakes, the New Madrid zone that is, and um, it's definitely building up stress. We do see earthquakes, right? Let us know that it's still alive. And uh, here's the 30 days of all magnitudes, just at the New Madrid zone. You can see it clear as day, about 40 earthquakes or so. Uh, nothing significant. If we go 2.5 and above, you can see there's nothing even above that level. Most of it is below the 2.5, but it does go to show you um, that it's still there and it's still very much alive in terms of being uh, tectonically active. What else have we got here for California? Uh, just a typical day down Southern Cal, it looks like, right along the San Andreas Fault, Desert Hot Springs area, still seeing some movement and a little activity out here around the Alamo region, all uh, just a little typical day out there in the West Coast region. What have we got here for the Newberry? There's the uh, there's the activity from last night um, or yesterday, I should say. I want to go go back and pull up the all magnitudes here. Most of the swarming was from um, yesterday, but earlier in the day, and then the prior night where we had about 12 earthquakes or so around the. Newberry Volcano in Oregon. I do want to check these folks out and see if uh, we got anything new going on today. And to check that out, really cool site to monitor the activity. It's going to be the PNSN network, uh, the volcanic seismicity map. You can check out all the volcanoes here throughout the Cascades. Um, we're going to check out the Newberry Volcano and these little triangles here indicating the different stations here with with a uh, a wide, away, a wide array of uh, seismograph stations. We're going to use this one right here, the three component broadband around the central Pumas. Uh, and of course that wasn't found. That's right. I think I had that same issue. What's bad is this one here is really close to the uh, epicenter of these trimmers. We're not trimmers, but uh, activity. This one right here is. So we'll check out this one. The uh, north rim should still pick up the activity that's going on there at Newberry. So stand by for a second here. Yeah, there's, what do we got here for times? About 1800 UTC time. So it is right now, <clears throat> let's see here, about 1800 UTC time. So overnight, definitely, we've seen um, an earthquake pick up here. That's the earthquake, a rather large one. <clears throat> not super large, but uh, it's showing up a little bit more than these swarms. I want to go back to the swarming area. There's, there's quite a few of them. Let's go back to the previous day. Of course, they're not going to let me see the previous day. Uh, so I think these little other signatures are larger than the uh, little swarms that we've been uh, shown to the public. As far as like the, uh, the activity that's occurring. Let me bring up that map again. See, I'm not seeing anything. So let's check out this earthquake right here, the 1.2. That was on the 25th at 0439. So the 25th would be the previous day, 0439. <clears throat> 0420. 0 439 should be somewhere right in here, but I'm not seeing it. 
Could it be this one? So if these are this, yeah, that kind of looks like it. So if these are a magnitude 1.2, then these must be much bigger, right? If that's a 1.2, these earthquakes that we're seeing here, at least prior to the 1.2, and then within the past few hours this morning, another one. So uh, a little bit larger earthquake activity occurring that's not being reported here uh, from the USGS and the PNSN network. Those are uh, definitely above the 1.2 level, right? I'd say those are probably closer to a 2 magnitude earthquake. So going to keep an eye on this. I'm not for sure if I can uh, spin up a, uh, a seismograph, live seismograph station in this area, but I will try and uh, see if I can get one because it's kind of kind of fishy, right? When you see earthquake activity showing up on a seismograph station and not being reported that's uh, that's an obvious uh suspicious circumstance there i would say so that's going to be on our radar uh daily and watching that activity there at newberry volcano considering we had that bulge of movement here uh just to the northwest of the region around the three sisters area right had that uh news article published earlier this year about uh, ongoing bulge of uh, and the rising of the ground out here around the south sister southwest of the uh, south sister Let's see what else we got here Let's check out the three sisters and see what's going on there's not a whole lot to monitor is there if I remember right one of these is just old data See if it's going to let me uh, access the uh, info here. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch, the wife. Wow, see, look at that. <clears throat> yep. All right, we'll check up over here, just west, southwest. See if we can get it. Um, here's the husband. Husband and the wife looks... About the same. So I don't know what's going on with all, all of this uh, data, but it's all overblown. And when you go to uh, check out the previous days, they're not accessible. And I find that kind of odd. There's certain days that are missing, right? It's kind of a little on the eerie side. So we're going to pull up the uh, GPS coordinates here of the Newberry Volcano in Oregon and take a look and see what's going on. I don't know if they have any GPS monitoring stations there or not around the Newberry Volcano. Um, let's see where we're at here. I find it kind of odd if they don't... Uh, so we're just south of Bend. Kind of trying to figure this out here. I'm really surprised if they don't have that. Wow. There we go kind of off the off the chart for a little bit I'm waiting for my caffeine to kick in so there is the Newberry volcano they do have one GPS uh, monitoring station there it looks like it's updated as well um, this is displacement northeast and vertical up right it looks like it does go to at least 2022 there's nothing really um, after 2022 so we're, we're missing a, a couple months here of activity which could be uh, you know important for data the overall trend though shows uh, pretty much level consistent uh, vertical displacement right here not a whole lot going on in that department getting a down slope of the north end and the east end uh, that's kind of uh we've got about 30 60 90 mm east and north uh, and 40 north so subsidence on that area at least on this gps station See if I can pull up uh, another one here real quick. Stand by for just a second here. Yeah, this one kind of goes to 2022 as well, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, it looks about the same here. So for the Newberry. So again, the quakes could be related to the subsidence, I guess, right? But either way, something we're going to keep an eye on for sure. <clears throat> I don't like it when uh, quakes are happening and they're they're not being reported. 
It's just kind of a kind of an odd deal. Regardless on why they're occurring, they should be reported. Uh, 3.5 way off the coast, the west coast, out there in the ocean, 16.2 kilometers. This area did see uh, I'm starting to see a little trail of movement here, kind of working its way westward. Got uh, a couple earthquakes in that area, a couple twos here. Actually, I believe they're all threes. Look at that. A couple threes pretty deep down there, about 40 kilometers, stretching westward, kind of making a migration westward towards the uh, Dutton Seamount area. Let's see what we got over the last seven days in this area. That's about it. 30 days. About the same, so a little, little bit of unusual earthquake activity out here in Hawaii. Uh, but unless we start seeing a swarm out there, we'll uh, we'll just call that as typical earthquake activity, or not typical, but uh, um, we'll just call it earthquake activity because it's not typical and it's not super unusual. Uh, what else we got here, folks? Uh, tremor last night, of course, was zero again. So looking looking like a return of a uh, lack of tremor. Yellowstone National Park. We'll check these folks out here. And uh, not a whole lot going on either. A couple small microquakes here around Madison. Seen those well defined earthquakes. Spikes, very small earthquakes though. Probably uh, a 0 0.1, 0 0.2 maybe. I don't even think USGS is picking up on them. Uh, they're not picking up on them. It's not even, not even worth turning on the computer for, uh, for those little earthquakes. Uh, let's go back to the EMSC model real quick and see what else we got going on around the world. Uh, these folks here not really shown too much either in terms of the Mediterranean region. We'll zoom in though and see if we can see some microquakes which, which are out there. I kind of like that. I like the EMSC model showing these little quakes because they are kind of important. Uh, a bunch of little quakes here scattered out and about the region. Uh, throughout the Mediterranean. Looks like they had a 3.8 over here as well into the area of southern Iran. Uh, that was, uh, looks like yesterday, at a depth of about 8 kilometers or so. Alright, let's see what else we got. I don't think there's anything too much going on in the sun, but it's we got these big sunspots kicking up here. Um, 2976, 2975, all kind of ramping up a little bit ginormous looking uh, but the flare threat remains at least to these folks 50% chance of a sea flare 5% chance of an X flare 1% chance I mean a 5% chance of an M flare X flare stands at 1% and it looks like we do have some storming possibilities coming up here on the 27th so after midnight tonight we should receive a little bit of a of a unrest there at the uh, higher locations, higher latitude locations, also KPNXs should uh, coincide with all that activity. Coronal holes, there is a little bit of movement right here, or uh, um, opening, I should say, solar wind. It is earth directed, but it's not massive. But that could also influx the uh, forecast over the next few days. But uh, we'll keep watching these sunspots, see what they want to do, see if they're going to do anything or if they're just going to sit there. <laughs> So, all right, guys, we will be back a little bit later on. Enjoy the evening or the afternoon. It's supposed to be about 82 degrees again here in California. Uh, we got a little bit of rain coming up early week, um, early early next week here. It's supposed to get maybe six tenths of an inch of rain. So I'll take it. It helped keep us green longer, and uh, a severe weather threat exists again in the. Um, Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana area again next week, folks. So um, I'll try to cover that a little bit more later on the update tonight. But uh, this past week, it was pretty severe. I had quite a few tornadoes break out in Texas. And uh, I think it's uh, definitely good to be weather aware this time of year. And uh, the setups that are taking place are perfectly set up for uh, tornado activity. So just Pay attention to your local news, weather service, and whatnot, and we'll try to cover it a little bit later on as well in our update video. Till then, have a good day, folks. I appreciate everyone checking in. And uh, just throwing this out here real quick, uh, we are selling uh, merchandise here on the channel. If you want 
10 bucks off any items. You got to enter in 10 off. That's 10OFF, and that will give you $10 off any items there on the Earthmaster channel. So I like to, or Earthmaster merchandise page, I like to throw out coupons once in a while to help out the folks. I know sometimes they raise the prices out there, and it's, uh, it's a little, things are getting expensive these days, that's for sure. But $10 off will help out uh, any item out there on the Earthmaster page. So go check it out. Till then, we'll catch you guys a little bit later. Stay safe, everyone. Peace out.